Welcome to the channel. My name is Matias. Today we're back with Jerry Dugan's X Men. We're going to cover issues two and three. This is still part of the Krakoan era, just in case. Now, the first issue that he gave us was fantastic. It had a lot of energy to it, something that X Men really needed during this time. Also, for the first time during this era, we get a formal X Men team. And the lineup in general, I think it's pretty fantastic. And I forgot to mention during the Hellfire Gala video that I did, one of the big reveals in that story was this particular lineup. So the issue actually starts off again with this new villain. His name is Cordyceps Jones. He runs this gigantic casino space station. And for some reason, he really wants to destroy Earth. And he seems to be particularly fixated on Earth's mutants. He really hates them. Still, up until this moment, we don't know his motivations outside of turning a profit. Because each time he tries to destroy Earth, everyone in the casino starts putting in their bets. It seems very entertaining for all these alien races to see all this pain and suffering on Earth. I wonder if Cordyceps Jones crosses paths with Mojo at any moment. It seems that these guys would get along. Now in this issue, he sends another menace to Earth instead of this giant kaiju. He actually infects this alien with the Annihilation Wave. So when he arrives to Earth, he basically just explodes and all these insects from the negative zone start spewing out. Now, before the X-Men spring into action, we have Jean Grey. She's training with Sync, teaching him how to use telepathic powers. The whole dialogue between them is actually very interesting. There's actually a fantastic moment where Jean Grey actually tells Sync she envies him that he can actually turn off these powers, that that's not a luxury that she has. So what happens is once the X-Men arrive on scene, the major focus of Mr. Dugan is actually... To not only show our heroes as badass fighting these evil insects, but really focus how they work as a team, their interactions between each one of the characters. Each of these characters try to push their powers in new and different ways because not only they have to kill all these evil insects, they also have to protect this small town. We get this really interesting moment, especially with Sunfire, that for the first time he actually feels like a superhero. That he enjoys saving people's lives and that he really loves his place on this team. So what happens is that Jean Grey is able to find the dead host of the Annihilation Wave. With some help of Polaris, they're able to jumpstart his brain. And she's able to see small tidbits of where this attack comes from. This is one of the first times that she's ever tried to read the mind of a dead person. It takes a lot out of her, but she discovers the existence of Cordyceps Jones and this game world. So once the X-Men save the day, the people of this small town throw this gigantic barbecue to give thanks to the X-Men. And it's pretty cool because the X-Men are not used to this treatment being viewed as straight up heroes. Because normally what would happen with the X-Men is that once the people that they save realize that they're mutants, they tend to turn on them. In general, humanity has been pretty ungrateful to the labors of the X-Men. Then at the end of issue two, we get a small peek of a new villain that we already got a hint of in the first issue. At first, it seems that we were dealing with the High Evolutionary, who's going to be in the next issue. But no, it's another character. His name is Dr. Stasis. So then we jump to issue three, where this gigantic ship has descended upon Vietnam. The X-Men jump into action, and what happens is they're encountered by High Evolutionary, who is a very interesting character, but like each writer writes him very, very differently. Sometimes he's shown to be a good guy. Other times he's shown to be this benevolent despot. Other times he's shown to be a clueless, bumbling fool, even though he's super smart. And in other times, he's just a straight-up villain, out to kill everyone, going full on genocide. And the High Evolutionary has a checkered history with the X-Men because way back in the late 90s, we had a brief story arc where he decided that he didn't want mutants to exist anymore. 
and he turned off their powers on a global level. And this actually happened because the High Evolutionary was under the influence of one of his friends, Mr. Sinister. But now the High Evolutionary has arrived on Earth. And he's actually very happy with the existence of Krakoa. He thinks that it's going to take humans' evolution in a very interesting direction. And he tells the X-Men, look, I have a gift for you guys. It's like this biological bomb. When it's set off, all humans are going to be sterilized. So within one generation, there's going to be no more humans. Mutants are going to flourish. And right off the bat, the X-Men think to themselves, nope, this is not going to be a good idea. Especially Rogue, who really, really hates the High Evolutionary. Because back in that very infamous story arc where we discovered that they had retconned Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver not to be mutants anymore. The High Evolutionary had also captured and experimented on Rogue. And he did some really messed up stuff to Rogue and also killed off the Wonder Man consciousness that inhabited her mind. So obviously we get a really awesome battle. I have to say that the art to this battle looks fantastic. Pepe Larraz does a fantastic job, man, on this whole run. The anime looks super cool. While the X-Men are battling out, High Evolutionary's daughter, Lumina, also jumps into action. Her power set is a weird mix between Quicksilver's and Scarlet Witch's. So she is a handful and possibly could take down all the X-Men on her own. But what happens is, and this is going to sound really redundant, Sync is able to sync up with her powers. He's able to take her down, and High Evolutionary is very impressed because she's not a mutant. So what happens is High Evolutionary is willing to make a deal with the X-Men. He's not going to set off this bomb, but he wants a blood sample from Sync. And Sync is like, okay, just stop this violence. I'll give you a blood drop. He doesn't even wait for the leader of the X-Men to give him the okay. Who I'm not sure who is the leader of this team, if it's Rogue or Cyclops. So he gives him the sample. High Evolutionary leaves. And again, like in the previous issue, the X-Men have a nice little party with the people that they have saved. Then the issue cuts to some evil machinations from Fei Long. But we're going to leave this video here. I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.